What is this cast on? It's how to get cold prospects to become fans of yours, to almost see you as an inbound lead. But the way that we're doing this is to leverage the vote of somebody that you have in common. Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Jeremy from of Quick Mail Ontario. Hey, and this is Jack from emailsthatsell.com. When was the last time you made someone happy with a cold email? I mean, truly happy. What if getting positive replies from outbound leads was as easy as contacting your own list of subscribers? Way too often, we rely on authority to convince someone that we're legit and worth talking to. But we are the one doing all the legwork. Today, Jack and I will explore different ways to go about it. Enjoy. Got a problem to troubleshoot with you, Jeremy. So I've noticed a huge difference from inbound leads and outbound leads. What is the difference, you ask? That's right. What's the difference, Jack? Tell us. Well, look, here's the thing. If somebody has been listening to the podcast or they've seen my work and they reach out, it is such a different experience, such a different exchange compared to a traditional outbound lead. For example, inbound leads that have listened to the podcast know that I have a lot of experience with outbound stuff. Outbound leads have to find that out either for themselves or maybe they assume I'm just like a run-of-the-mill sales guy or worse. So question de jour is how do we sort of make prospects roll out the red carpet or how do we let our reputation lead the way even when we're drumming up outbound leads? Mm. That's a good problem because obviously when I'm reaching out to someone I don't know, well, technically that other person doesn't know me either. And so therefore we start from zero. So how can we sort of like accelerate that bypass a few of the exchange so we even like come welcomed, like, oh, so great, you're emailing me. That'd be like the holy grail, right, kind of thing. Exactly. And, and to be fair, I think if we figure this out, and I do have a couple ideas, if we figure this out, marketers are going to be in a either a really bad or a really good position because then the quality of inbound versus outbound leads will be a lot closer to even. And, you know, so there's a whole lot of mm. benefits there. So isn't that actually the benefit of having a brand? If you have a good brand and you contact someone that supposedly is know your brand, then obviously you bypassed a few of those steps already, right? It's true, but notice what has to happen in order for that to come about. The prospect you reach out to has to have seen your brand before. Yep. And unless you are in a position where you can say, yep, I'm in a very defined niche and prospects know us. Then you need to listen to the rest of this episode because you're probably thinking, <laughs> well, how do I let my <laughs> reputation you know, beat me to the punch, so to speak? That's exactly why, actually, people who do advertisement before their campaign and pre-warm them have a better chance of success because they manage to sort of like bypass that a little bit by having their sort of reputation going, preceding them a little bit. Can we actually go even further? Do you have some ideas or some... Some stuff. I got my ideas, but obviously you must yeah. have some, right? Otherwise, I'll do the episode on my own, and that's no fun. Not to worry, Jeremy. You're not going to have to do the episode alone here. Um, <laughs> look, you mentioned using ads to help, uh, let's say, establish your brand before you get in touch. And that's really powerful. Yeah. And I think today, cold emailers aren't just like black and white. All you need is a, an email account and you're in business. No, the reality is there's many different channels and outlets that we can do and build up in order to have better results through outbound. And I can think of two clients off the top of my head that really had a very defined target audience. They were influencers in that area. And the vast majority, we're talking like 60% of all the prospects they were reaching out to saw their keynote presentation, have seen their ads, have like interacted with their brand before. And that makes a huge difference Yes, branding will dramatically increase your results on outbound and inbound, right? So just to crystallize, the question we're addressing now is like, how can, you know, an average Joe get to that point? You know, because I think really there's only three ways that you can make prospects understand your worth before you reach out to them. 
And okay. the first one is using like the authority signals that Robert Cialdini writes about in his book, Influence. We've talked about this at length, but basically it is in your signature, for example, you have author in your title, you have a photo of you presenting at TEDx, you have uh, you know, the classic picture of the white lab coat, I am an yeah. authority in this subject matter. But yep. this is very hard to do. Well, uh, a bit of Photoshop and you're done. I mean, Jack, where is the, <laughs> the big deal? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but so let's just get this out of the way. Do you think this would help us allow our prospects to understand our reputation? You know, if we happen to be an author, a TEDx speaker, or the white lab coat expert? I mean, is this one use case that works? Yeah, for sure. It does work. We know that. Mm. Okay. And here's a tactic for the rest of us. I'm not a TEDx speaker. I'm not an author yet. Jeremy is. But for those oh, who don't have the, uh, I don't know, the bright blinking light trust signal going off in their signature, you can always do, you know, way number two, which is get an intro. Get an intro. That's like, yeah, not cold email, but hear me out for a second. That's right. Hear me out for a second. I was on the phone yesterday with a guy, let's call him Will, and he told me that somebody that introduced him, let's call him James, I don't know, happened to say a lot of good things about Will. And he said, Will's the man, you got to work with Will. Like I'm telling you, when it comes to you know this, he's the go-to guy. And right off the bat, Will is the expert and the reputation precedes him. And basically it was a lead that understood his worth right away. So that's way number two. It's kind of a cheat because it's not really what I would consider cold email, but it works. Well, in all case, I think what would be super amazing is that someone sell you on Will. So James is selling you on Will. He say he's so great, he's awesome and whatever. And you happen to have a need that will can fulfill. Like, let's say, for example, you're trying to decide what brand of tequila you want to buy. And then Will is the guy you've been sold to as the actual expert in all the brand of tequila. And then suddenly, out of the blue, Will is cold emailing you. I think at that point, you'll be like totally sold as a prospect. And I think that's the sort of thing, how can we actually achieve this sort of level without necessarily being the TEDx speaker or the sort of like, worldwide authority, you know, recognize authority, right? Am I getting that right? You're exactly on the right path here. I think the question we're trying to address is like, it seems like when inbound is done correctly, it's as if we're pulling up to our prospect in a Ferrari. And it's sometimes if you're doing outbound, you know, in a mediocre manner, it's like you're riding up to your prospect on a donkey or something, you know, you want to carry a lot of influence with you as you reach out. But I've been doing a lot of talking, and before I get to my third one, and this is actually the practical one that the rest of us can use, tell me, what do you think are some methods that the rest of us can use? All right, I don't want to steal it from you. Although I did get it from someone else last year, and then I think I shared it with you and you really loved it. Are you thinking that your third one is LinkedIn stuff? Nope. Well, okay. <laughs> maybe, maybe, go ahead, go ahead. All right, I'm gonna say it. What about this one? Imagine you're posting something on a social network where people outside of your network can interact, whether they put like a like, a sort of reaction, or even a comment to it. So that way, you know that they know you, but you don't know them. So when you reach out to them, this is technically a cold email, but you'll be already pre-warmed and people will say, you know, oh my God, you're reaching out to me, that sort of thing. Is that the point you wanted to raise? I, it's not. It's not at oh, all. Good, but good, good. Um, but I actually, it's funny. I'm looking at my notes here. I have that exact technique and the person who shared it with us. And yeah, it, it's brilliant. So the question is, does this work? Yeah, it does. But yeah. to me, it doesn't quite qualify as something that I can do unless I have a lot of influence on LinkedIn. And you know, no. for our listeners, we like outbound because we can go straight to the customer. Plus, you know, the funny thing is I almost like believe that it's easier to go on a TEDx talk than it is to actually get like 100 likes on your post. I don't know. <laughs> I, can't, I can't do it. Personally, like, no one's liking my post. Guys, if you see my post, at least, you know, just like it. I don't know if this is because I don't really <laughs> care being liked or not, but, you know, 
I don't know. I can't collect them. For some people, it works crazy. <laughs> For me, it's easier to, <laughs> to go to a TEDx show. I don't know. What can I Help say? Help them out, guys. <laughs> Help them out. Give Jeremy some love. Yeah, add him on LinkedIn and engage with him for Christ's sake. Okay, so uh, let's see here. That's a great technique, but it comes right back to what you just said. What if you aren't someone who can just draw in 20 yeah. likes and choose your second degree network to reach out to, then you're kind of stuck back to square run. But I think I have an idea that's going to work for all of us. And it has to do with a little bit, little bit of LinkedIn, but not really. Here's how it works. Okay. I'm curious. Tell me. Jeremy, step one is get a testimonial. It can be a video, ideally, but get a testimonial from a rock star in your industry, a very big deal person. And you do that by just doing good work, putting your nose to the grindstone, and eventually you will be able to serve a bigger client who does carry some clout in your industry. All right. And then once you have their stamp of approval, you go to followers of that individual and reach out with a cold email and at the signature or in, even better in the PS. By the way, it looks like we both know name. Here's a video testimonial of what he said after working with us. Voila. What do you think? Nice. I like it. I like it very much. I had in my notes something that was similar. Like, you know, we interviewed Derek Siever, for example. Then we can just go after his fan and just present us as, hey, we had Derek Siever on a show. Do you also want to come on a show or whatever? Just reaching out to them. And so that way you yeah. bypass like, who's this guy? Is it legit? And you already come to, you know, in favorable lights. And so, you know, that's how it unfolds. A slight difference to this one, which is pretty much the same technique. And bear in mind that, you know, we're talking about sort of like same strategy and there's plenty of techniques we can apply. Another one would be to get on a podcast show yeah. and then just tap on the audience. You can see it because some of the podcasts have Twitter accounts, for example, so you can see who's following them or they're on Facebook and people do some likes on some of their posts. Maybe even your own show, yeah. right? If you go on one of the episodes, people share that episode and then some people comment on it, then reach out to them. It may not be through cold email, but it may also be, maybe it's on LinkedIn as well. Maybe on YouTube, I think it's much harder to figure out, you know, who's actually, you know, liking, but lots of platform, you can effectively see who's interacting with the content. That's cool because I think there's like two parts to this approach that we're, we're describing here. Part one is get that endorsement from someone with reach. And part two is identify people that know that person that just endorsed you and then send them a cold email. And thus, you will have this, it's not necessarily a referral or an introduction, it's probably one step back. However, it's a big deal to get this authority figure to endorse you. That's really what we're trying to tap into here. Problem is, it is hard to find their audience a podcaster, uh, okay, I, I may be able to find out, you know, Facebook fans or, or Twitter followers, but that is a really kind of challenging process to work backwards and find the email address. So instead, what about this approach where I get endorsed by someone who's an influencer in my industry? Then I head over to LinkedIn and since we're first degree connections, I can go to their profile and view everybody that we share in common and people that are in our second degree network. And that's the big aha moment is you will suddenly be able to get access to people that know them and it also have an easy way to find the email address for the right people you want to reach out to. Now, obviously, disclaimer, just because you share a second degree connection with somebody doesn't mean that A, they're a good fit for you to reach out to. You know, you need a filter by company, job title, that kind of thing. And B, it does not give you the right to pitch in that email, even though you have a mutual person giving you an endorsement, because you don't know if they have a problem with what you're solving. So even if you're taking this approach, my advice, reach out and just find out how they're addressing this particular issue. Maybe, you know, offer some guidance or invite them to a quick brainstorm session. Do not pitch, and it should work quite nicely. I like that. I like that very much. Another one that is relevant when you have a product, but it could also be with services, although it's a bit harder, is find people, you're like, you're sort of secret fans. The one who actually did a review of your product, liking your product, for example, but didn't really 
you know, raise their hand and stuff and just reach out to them. So you can do a list of all the blog posts that mentioned you in a very favorable way and then just reach out to them and either, you know, propose for them to maybe send them some swags and ask them if they'd be interested in cross promoting some stuff with you or maybe become an affiliate if you have an affiliate program or, you know, all those sort of things that could actually benefit by having some evangelists for your own stuff. And that way they can maybe reach out to their own audience and sort of like sell you automatically. That's one way. Yeah, that's cool. And I think the easier job you make it for them to share and promote what you're doing, yep. the more likely it is that they will put you in front of their audience, right? Yeah, great point. Mm -hmm. Great point. Or, you know, just invite them on some show, some ego trip somehow. You know, everyone's just like that from time to time, five minutes of fame with their sort of you know, fans or stuff like that, that yeah. uh, not some fun with their hero that, that, that works mm -hmm. maybe stronger words here, but you get the ideas, right? Yeah. I can imagine that if you're selling, you know, insurance, um, policies, then that may be a bit, <laughs> a bit harder to apply those words. I don't know. It could, but if let's say somebody reached out to me out of the blue and say, Hey Jack, I happen to take care of friend of yours with their insurance policy. Maybe you'd like to talk or they said hello, or I don't know, just even with insurance and we're picking on this industry because I think it is a classic hard sell to get in front of somebody with life insurance, let's say, but that would actually work if we both knew someone that they were working with. So the idea is to serve a crowd yeah, and then right. potentially reach out to their common networks. And the last thing that I'll mention, I may have another one because that's sort of how these podcasts go. Like we're sort of just... <laughs> A snowball here, picking up speed. But I think this is a good time to say, hey, listener, put some effort into A, like growing your LinkedIn network and B, collecting testimonials from your clients and customers. I mean, it's something that is sort of like smack your forehead. Obviously, that's a, a thing we should be doing. But when's the last time you reached out to a happy customer and asked for some love either on G2 Crowd, if you're in software or Captera, or if you're a service provider like me, LinkedIn. You know, there's a really prominently displayed section on your profile called recommendations. And look, I'll just finish this by saying, if you've put some effort into adding recommendations, such as me, you can check out my profile if you're curious. I have like a bunch of happy reviews. And basically now what it's gonna allow you to do is just click on the people that left you the review, and then you can see if there's anyone in their network that you may either ask for an intro to, which is probably top quality, best approach, or if we're a little bit lazier, just reach out saying, hey, looks like we both know Sarah, since you're working on XYZ, but, and then, you know, offer some help. That's basically the approach. And I think your network is an asset. So keep growing it. Absolutely love it. And if you're thinking like, man, I'm not the type of person who actually remember those things, you know, out of 10 clients, I may remember like two or three, actually write it as a process step by step. This is what I need to do. Send, you know, an email with that person asking that exactly and so on. And then outsource this process to someone else could be, you know, one of your partner or one of the employee uh, in your company, but someone else who will then diligently do it because it's way easy to say, Hey, take care of Greg because I finished with him. And then you just ask the other person to follow the process. Works super well that way. But you need a trigger. Yes. Because there has to be a concrete event that always happens that then will indicate, okay, it's time to reach out for that testimonial slash referral slash introduction. And like for me, when a console call is finished, while we're still on Zoom, I say, how did I do? I get some, some hopefully really... Good feedback. <laughs> and I say, hey, would you do me a favor? Really self-assessed, but do you mind if I ask you for a LinkedIn recommendation? Zero people have said no to that. I encourage you to try that question out. Same thing goes where maybe you have a podcast after the interview, maybe just asking your guest, you know, like just have parts of your service or product where like on the third month of usage, you reach out and say, how's things going? Maybe get a, what is it? An NPS score. Is that right, Jeremy? Yep, that's right. Get an MPS score and then, you know, if it's seven or greater, you know what to do, right? You yeah. have a process. Start with eight and greater. Eight or great. Eight. <laughs> hey, you would know. I got another tip, actually. Some people may frown upon this, but basically 
write the review for yourself. Send that to someone else and say, if you don't have time to write one, here's one I did for you. If you're happy with it, you can use it or just feel free to write whatever you want. That way you achieve two things with just this. The first one is you make it easy on them. They don't have to rack their brain into, okay, what can I say really? And so on, that takes too much time. I'll do it later and actually it never gets done. And then the second thing is you stay in control as to what exactly do you want to publish on your sort of word of recommendation. Like you can say like, if you're really proud, for example, of um, your support, for example, you can just tell them, hey, great support, by the way, kind of thing like that. That's something they may have come up with, but may not. And they still agree with that. So that helps you to actually direct what type of feedback you actually want to have on your page. You know, I'm a big fan of making it very easy for someone. I mean, you're asking them for a favor, so might as well take the load off and make it as easy as possible for them. However, the, what I've been doing lately is I just, hey, you know, thanks for offering to write a recommendation because remember, I get this verbally while we're on the phone Yeah, 90% of the time. Yeah, And I say, uh, if it helps, here's a couple things that you may want to include you can write anything you want. A couple sentences will do. Really proud, and this is important, really proud to display your review on my public profile, right? And uh, I put like four bullet points and just basically maybe steer them a little bit towards certain areas. I'm not going to tell you what those are, <laughs> nor is it relevant to your business, but you may want to steer them. If you think your support is great, like you said, Jeremy, maybe drop a, a bullet point that talks about support or whatever. You don't have to hit them over the head with a, a hammer. Instead, you can just sort of leave a few breadcrumbs. And in my experience, people will surprise you with really thoughtful reviews, uh, but you have to do a good job, of course. And you know, the funny one, this is not an episode on how to get great LinkedIn reviews, <laughs> but I throw one more tip, actually. People sometimes are actually shocked because they say, hey, Jeremy, do you mind like doing me a review? And this happened like recently with someone I really like, but you know, dude, I'm a busy person. So I just told him like, sure, I'm happy. Just write it for me. I'll post it. I'll review it and I'll post it. And the person was actually shocked. I mean, he was younger. So, you know, when you're young, you don't quite understand those things. And he thought like, I will put all my heart into, you know, <laughs> making him some prize. And so he will know, right. you know, as he's reading the review, then suddenly, you know, his heart is going to whatever. The point is that if you want a review, just make it easy on me. Just write it for me. And if I'm okay with that and there's nothing like out of the ordinary that I would say, then I'm okay. You know, I'll just post it. So anyway, that was a shocker for him, but it was super fun experience as well. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I think that's more of the way the world works, but... Um, <laughs> it didn't know I what mean, to write. <laughs> I know so, that's like, actually not bad. I know? <laughs> I know some people who actually go as far as to, if they're asking for an intro, they'll not only write the entire email that introduces somebody, but they will put it into a mail to link. So all the person has to do is click the link. It will populate the message and all they have to do is click send. I mean, <laughs> is that a bad idea? No, I think it's brilliant. And uh, what you do with it is up to you. I think it's awesome. But and look, that this concludes is... our cast on, you oh, know, on how right. to get no, great no, no. reviews. On but, but this is the thing. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> what is this cast on? It's how to get cold prospects to become fans of yours, to almost see you as an inbound lead. But oh, the way that we're doing this is to leverage the vote of somebody that you have in common. And the easiest way to do that is get a review, get a testimonial, get a video review, and then go out and reach out to your shared people uh, within your networks. So it kind of is a cast on getting some reviews, no? All right, fair enough. All right, I'll throw another tip here, not for getting reviews. I'm going to move on. I'm sorry, Jack. There are probably also people following your company page on LinkedIn. Reach out to them because they are probably casting their vote as to saying like, this is a company I like, I want to interact with, or I want news from. So you can just reach out. Obviously, some people will just say, well, this is an inbound lead. And it is to some extent. It's just maybe not part of the process, like actively saying like, hey, I want to receive something from you. If anyone ever says like, well, that's an inbound lead. So I treat them like a, a marketing qualified lead. I'm not going to do outreach. I have to ask you, is your marketing doing a good enough job as it is to justify not using any outbound tactics on that 
ever-growing list that you have. And nine times out of 10, there's probably some big wins to come out of that inbound list using some outbound techniques here. But wow, did we cover a lot here. <laughs> oh, I got one more, actually. Sorry, don't, don't end the cast right now. Um, here's the other one. When people share the same belief, I think it acts as strongly as being an authority in that market. So imagine, for example, you really believe in climate change and I'm the one who's been actively lobbying for climate change. I can use that. You never heard about me specifically, but you heard about the cause. And so therefore, I sort of get automatically the authority of that cause with me. Because we're certainly automatically in the same group. They're happy to hear about me. Ah, at last, someone who share my belief. And I think you can also use that in business, uh, maybe. Well, let's think about it. I know several campaigns, I don't know if this is still a thing, but people were scraping Slack channels and extracting users on a topic where it could be centered around a belief, no? Oh, that's a good one, like growth hacking, for example. They have their sort of like small community of growth hacker. And if I reach out to a growth hacker and say, hey man, you know, we're together, growth hacker kind of thing. I wanted to share with you this latest great tool. Would you want to have a quick look at it? Of course they will be sure they're sort of like sharing the same belief about how to approach and see the world. And so therefore that's easier. I'll give you another example. Imagine for example, someone who was absolutely hating cool email that was doing lobbying for, you know, at Congress and things like that. Can spam. Yeah. Yeah. For can spam, stronger, harsher regulation. And then I reach out to them as a cool email expert. Do you think it will go well? <laughs> uh, yeah. I have an idea how that might go. Um, <laughs> That probably that person that uh, responded with, I'm going to report you to the FCC and scared the crap out of me <laughs> oh, yeah, when you, I was just starting you, out. Yeah, you met that person. That's <laughs> yeah, but actually, I mean, we're talking here, like imagine there's a digital nomad group. Uh, what yeah. is it? Uh, great Fire one. or something. Oh, there are plenty. But that's yeah. a great, again, the same great thing. Like they use certain tools and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, just imagine if you were, I don't know, connecting with people from your home country in working in Bangkok or something, and you wanted to get their opinion on something related to digital nomads, that's a shortcut to establishing yourself as somebody yeah. not only worth talking to, but somebody who's maybe as a peer with on the same level. Maybe the likability principle. I think it's one step in between, you know, not knowing someone and, you know, having someone else selling you that person. I think it's yeah. sort of like in between, but I think it's worth mentioning. The challenge will be to figure out how to build a list around a common belief. B2B lists do not make it easy on us to filter by job title and psychographic details. I mean, maybe in the future it will be. And it's your rack the gun, right? And that's exactly right. Full circle coming back to uh, point number one. Make some noise on LinkedIn and see who responds to it. All right, Jeremy. Yeah, and get two likes like me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to help Jeremy out with some links <laughs> and likes and whatever else we're doing on social media. But Jeremy, great cast, man. Yeah, great cast to Jack. For those who don't know, uh, Jack is probably going to take a small pause as he's getting a baby very soon. So everyone who wants to congratulate him, podcast at quickmail.io, say just, just hi. And don't worry, we got plenty of episodes done in advance. So sure. we're going to cover you. Uh, thanks, guys. Yeah, I'm excited. Going to be a first time dad. So anyways, enjoy the, the podcast. In the meantime, I'm going to kick off. And uh, if you want to shoot over some good wishes, love to hear from you. And if you manage to sell diapers in bulk, you know, you got a client, right? <laughs> with, co with COVID, I think it's, you know, you're going to yeah. hit him hard. Go for yeah. it. Send me a cold email. I'll <laughs> buy stuff if it's baby related. Although uh, we're going cloth diapers because we're crazy. But anyways, awesome. Right. Yeah. Thanks, Jeremy. Catch you later. Bye. To recap, you can win the respect and improve the overall quality of your outbound leads without having to become the next TEDx speaker or best-selling author. 
Here's how. First, you can start off by getting a warm intro with high remarks, but that's not technically a cold email. Next, you can get an influencer to write you a testimonial or, or make you a testimonial video and reach out to their crowd, being sure to drop in that person's recommendation. Next, you could post on LinkedIn and then cold email the people that are engaging with your content because they already are some level of fan of your thoughts. You can contact shared connections of the people who've given you a LinkedIn recommendation and use that common thread in order to start off your conversation on the right foot. And finally, shortcut all of this by using a common belief to fast track this entire trust building process. Hey, cold emailer. Yeah, you. If you got some value from this episode, give us a high vibe by sharing a two sentence review on iTunes. Or Stitcher, or TuneIn, that works too. It's a quick way to help other growth-minded folks like us find this podcast. So they can send awesome emails. And make everyone's inbox a better place. Thanks.